The root of feminism's attack on civilization is its desire to advance female power, that is, the power of women as a group, without regards to the nature of the individuals of which it is made up. This is the basis for all feminist interpretations of the world. Men and women, as groups, are analysed in terms of the power one has over the other. A good real-world example of this in practice is the Duluth model, which is used for explaining and dealing with domestic violence. As the National Institute of Justice in the United States tells us, the Duluth model proposes that the principal cause of domestic violence is a social and cultural patriarchal ideology that has allowed men to control women through power and violence. The model does not assume that domestic violence is caused by other issues such as mental or behavioural health problems. One paper from the University of Montana School of Law summarises the problems of this approach. The most common criticisms include complaints that the model is based on ideology, is unsupported by scientific and empirical evidence, ignores potential causes of intimate partner violence, dismisses female perpetrated or mutual violence, and offers an inflexible approach to a complex social problem. Feminist ideology determines that women's power is so unfairly restricted by men as to render them definitionally oppressed and incapable of wrongdoing against their oppressor. Therefore, advancing the collective power of women against men becomes desirable regardless of how it's done, and this is what is expressed in the Duluth model. Through feminist theory in the Duluth model, a woman is not really capable of wrongdoing towards a man, and all men are complicit in any wrongdoing that happens to a woman. Women as individuals are not considered to be the source of their own decision making, and cease to be moral agents. Instead, all power, authority and morality resides in men's decisions and actions, as embodied in the gestalt entity that is the patriarchy. And women are exculpated entirely from any wrongdoing. Even when a woman does something obviously evil, it wasn't really her fault because of the influence of men over her. With moral deficiency secured in only one of the sexes, a conceptual war can then be waged on the other without reservation. What feminism ironically ends up creating is the scenario in which it would actually be justified to deprive women of access to power entirely because of their fundamental lack of moral culpability in the consequences of their own actions. People like Pearl Davis are the other side of the coin. Rather than advancing female power, she wishes to advance male power in a negative image of the Duluth model. In much the same way as feminist praxis, Pearl does not treat men as responsible moral agents who should be held accountable for their own behaviour. Instead, she moves the locus of responsibility by reducing all bad male behaviour to the influence of women, rendering women as the prime movers of men and masculinity, literally describing them as the source of all evil. You said evil comes from women. Well, because I would just look at every problem in society. It all comes from women. To be fair, I just, I just realized this the other day, but did you know that Hitler was made by a woman? <laughs> that proves it. Well, it's like you look at you look at the homeless. Most of them come from single mother homes. You look at school shooters. Most of them come from single mother homes. You look at criminals, rapists. Most of them come from single mother homes. Um, you look at what happens when women what happens when women get power. So when men get power, they build societies. They do awesome things. When women get power, we're just not very good with it. And so we come to the strange contradiction of her worldview. A man is not the cause of or accountable for his behaviour but he should also have complete power over women and the final say on all issues. This is an inversion of the Duluth model. From her own position though, advancing men's power over women is still actually advancing women's power over men. If women are the ultimate source of all evil, men are just a conduit through which it flows. Men as men are thereby excluded from the conversation and discourse becomes women debating with women over the power of women. Men, as non-agents, do not deserve their power, as it is just an expression of female abuse. This is, of course, the entire purpose of feminist dialectic, to establish women as the focal point of society. Pearl arrives at a place in which the feminists would be completely satisfied, and merely 
hash out the details. It is not then without irony when Pearl accuses conservative women who are not engaged in a battle of the sexes of being feminists while she herself serves feminist interests entirely. However, Pearl's criticisms are correct. It is her solutions that are wrong. She is right that 60 years of feminism have done severe damage to the relationship between the sexes. The advance of women's power through society and law have indeed made relationships difficult for men, and there are countless examples of men being mistreated by the system because of the influence of feminism. She is also right that women's arbitrary power, which was advanced by feminism, does indeed need to be rolled back. Freely available abortion, no-fault divorce, affirmative action, and presuming the guilt of the accused are all examples of feminist victories which must be undone to restore justice. However, the remedy for these is not simply to reverse the injustices within the same paradigm, nor to establish women as the sole source of moral legitimacy or fault. The remedy is to abolish the ideological nature of feminist decision-making altogether. Both men and women are moral agents and are culpable for their own behavior. This is a normal, non-ideological truism which serves as the bedrock for sensible and just outcomes regarding interactions between the sexes. This means that it's not wrong for a woman to criticize a man's actions in the same way that it isn't wrong for a man to criticize a woman's. Both are capable of exercising judgment about right and wrong and are entitled to do so about the opposite sex. Beginning in this position, which is respectful to the dignity of both sexes, allows each to feel recognized and needed in society, and the social wounds created by feminism might then begin to heal. This is not a zero-sum game. Men should care about and support the health, well-being, and safety of women in the same way that women should care about and support the dignity, authority, and power of men. We can't make a better world by tearing each other down. Fundamentally, though, we must begin with the view that men and women are not enemies, and we are not at war. We were, in fact, created for one another, to love and be loved by each other, and this is the proper arrangement for human affairs.